Hi, Facebook friends. Helen Arcantu here, CEO of the YWCA of Northern New Jersey. So happy to have some time with you this evening. It is Thursday. We are approaching the end of the week, and it's a wonderful time for us to be focused on self-care, loving ourselves and making sure we're taking good care of ourselves. So with that, I welcome you all to, you've been joining us for YWTV for the last two months that we've been bringing you during this time that we've been sheltering in place. And tonight is the first time we're launching one of our When on the Go events and using it um, with our YWTV. So we're excited to uh, finally get back to our When series. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's an opportunity for our um, female small business owners and entrepreneurs to network, exchange ideas, and get advice about how to grow their businesses and how to keep themselves strong in the process. Um, I've had the wonderful fortune and opportunity over the last few months um, to connect to so many um, small business owners um, during this time of COVID-19. Um, we've had so many wonderful conversations uh, that have really, you know, shown me how creative um, all of our small business owners are and how they're all thinking outside the box to keep their businesses moving forward during this time. But we're thrilled tonight because, you know, you can't really be successful in your business unless you are taking care of yourself. And so this has been a wonderful opportunity tonight that we are going to just focus on you and uh, giving yourself a little TLC, taking care of yourself and just dedicate tonight, this next hour, to your well-being of your body and your mind. So we have some incredibly special invited wellness experts tonight to join us. And they'll be demonstrating and sharing some wonderful advice on healthy eating, fitness, and mindfulness. So with that, let's get started. And let's start with someone who is very known in our community. Um, uh, she's a uh, integrative health and nutrition coach, Audrey Zona. Um, Audrey specializes in the psychology of eating. Um, she was trained in the Institute for Psychology of Eating, the world's leading nutritional psychology school. Um, she believes that outer beauty is a reflection of inner health and champions, and um, she champions all things beauty, health, and wellness related. She's a lifelong clean eating advocate. She mentors her clients to empowered food choices and helps transform their nutritional habits. I've been following Audrey, I mean, she, she knows this, I've been following her on social media for a while now, and I'm always Aww. impressed with her recipes and her tips and her inspiration mm -hmm. um, and how she shares so much about her own journey to help us with ours. So I'm so happy to have you here with us, Audrey. Thank and you. Uh, mm -hmm. for you to be introduced to, you know, hopefully Thank some you. new um, folks that can also get engaged with you. So. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about why so many of us have a difficult relationship with food. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, honestly, um, I think it's mostly because, unfortunately, many of us are so wired to use food as a coping mechanism and a pacifying mechanism. We've been wired since a very, very young age. Think about it. You fall down. You hurt your knee. Mommy comes over, she puts a Band-Aid. And for many of us, it's here, let's go get an ice cream cone or here, let's go have a cookie or, you know, whether it's sadness or hurt or pain or happy, we tend to reward with food. And that gets so sort of ingrained in us at a very, very young age. And we tend to kind of carry that through with us for most of our lives. So that's part of the reason. Um, many of us are also dealing with a lot of stressful situations, um, hormonal situations, and a lot of those things really propel us to use food as that comfort and that kind of hug, that love that we often need from other areas of life that we're not getting. So, I mean, I could spend a day talking about, you know, why we tend to have a dysfunctional relationship with food. Um, but those are two of the kind of like the top things um, that I find so often. But in my work, what I do is we kind of like unpack old stories, old beliefs, old stuff that we've been holding on to. And then we rewire the brain and we rewire all kinds of new habits and new thoughts and new ways of thinking so that we stop using food as that coping mechanism. And we find so many other pleasures and joys in our life. And it doesn't have to always be around food. That doesn't mean that we can enjoy food and have celebration around food, but we want to make sure that it's very, very balanced 
and that we're using food mainly for nourishment and to stay alive um, and to keep us going and to keep our bodies healthy and alive. And we want to live as long as possible, obviously, but we don't, it's not our only source of pleasure. So that's just kind of it in a nutshell. <laughs> well, that, that's a, that, that explains a lot for, you know, in, in, in those few moments, but you know, what I can say is um, I'm really grateful that you're going to share some strategies with us on how to make better and healthier food. Um, I know right now where we're, a lot of us are um, obviously sheltering in place and, you know, yes. it's very, um, I know for me, you know, it's been just very easy to stroll into the kitchen because oh, yeah. you know, you're working so close to it. And uh, uh -huh. it, it seems to, you know, be everything from helping the anxiety about what's going on outside yes. Yes. and, you know, and also the stress of what's going inside if you're managing working from home and homeschooling kids and, you know. Yeah, we're dealing with a lot of stress, a yeah. lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty. And like you said, we're around food so much more. I mean, the first few weeks of the pandemic, I feel like every other day my daughter was let's make banana bread, let's make brownies. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, you're just <laughs> killing me. And like, it's really hard. You know, you want to say, okay, well, I'll have a bite. But those bites and licks and tastes, they add up. You know, at the end of the day, you only need a few extra hundred calories. And then remind, listen, we're not getting the same movement. Like we might still be exercising for that one hour or 30 minutes, but it's the non-exercise movement that we haven't been getting being at home so much. Yeah. So it's very easy, unfortunately, to put on five to 10 pounds in a really short amount of time. And you just don't realize that all those little extras add up over time. So yeah, quarantine 15 is a real thing. <laughs> it is a real thing. It is a real thing. So yeah. give us give us some ideas. Okay. What there's some things that we can do. So do you want me to take you actually to my stove right now? Yes, I've actually, I would okay. Love to, I would so love to um, welcome, it. welcome to my kitchen. Hold on yeah. one second. Yeah, okay. Thank you. For having so me. sure. So what I actually have kind of prepared to show you is one of my favorite, very quick, either lunches or dinners. And I call it my taco in a bowl. So everything is from Trader Joe's because so many of us shop at Trader Joe's. I thought, let me just focus on the Trader Joe's things because very, very mm -hmm. easily available. And they're so stocked with produce at this point. So what I have in the pan here, I sauteed three different bagged lettuces. So guys, you don't have to go crazy chopping and slicing. These are three wonderful things that I use on a very regular basis. We have shredded green and red cabbage with some carrots. We have a broccoli and kale slaw. And I want to mention that I buy a lot of these complete kits, but I will just throw away the dressing that comes with it. These things are not that expensive. I don't feel bad to throw away that stuff. This is so easy and handy. And I don't want to hear from anybody. I don't have time. You don't have time. Buy this. It's really, really awesome. And then we also have things like Cruciferous Crunch Collection. This is also a favorite. All these things I will use raw in salads and I'll also saute. So what I did here was I sauteed this delicious mixture, but I first did some chopped up green onion in my favorite garlic oil from Oliver Twist. The store is in Ridgewood. If anyone has not been, Great you store. must, must go. You can see here, I have a collection of olive oils and vinegars from Oliver Twist. I'm a huge fan there the finest that you could possibly buy. And what's so awesome about this oil, and not that I'm so plugging them because <laughs> I get nothing, but um, I'm a fan. Um, you can really cook at the high heat with this oil because it has all of the properties retained in the olives because it is so fresh that it has not been stripped. It has not been overly processed like so many oils that you're going to buy in the regular store. So even though it might say that it's from Italy and it's cold pressed and blah, 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 it's not the same, believe me. So go to Oliver Twist and Ridgewood. It's really worthwhile. They'll give you samples. Well, actually now they're not really open, but they're doing curbside delivery. You can order online. I love them. So anyway, so I sauteed this separately in another pan. Here I have organic ground turkey, also from Trader Joe's. And I started to brown the meat first. And then I added um, about a quarter of a package of their taco seasoning, which I love. And then I also added a little bit of a tomato paste just to give it some moisture. 
Um, you could use a tomato sauce if you want. I prefer the paste, it's a little bit thicker. So I browned that up and added the spices and salt and pepper. And here we have a delicious taco. So for the family, you can do a variety of things. You can use the taco in a tortilla shell. You can do chips. I prefer to do a helping of greens. I'm a big, big fan of greens. Guys, you need fiber. The two magic things in your diet to stay healthy, satisfied, and satiated is a lot of vegetable, a lot of salad, a lot of green, okay? That's where you're gonna get your fiber. You have healthy fat in your oil, and then you've got your protein. I'm a huge fan of protein. Um, I know there are lots of vegans out there who get protein from beans and tofu, fabulous. I am, though, also a fan of animal protein. I'm okay with it, and I will always add a very nice portion of my ground chicken or turkey. This is turkey. You can also use chicken, topping it over the greens. So I always have a nice portion of protein, a beautiful portion of greens and vegetables. I personally would even add more vegetables to this because I love the veggies and I really <laughs> fill up on them. And then some more healthy fat. I would add, I love these little 100 calorie packs. Um, I won't even need this whole 100 calorie pack of guacamole. I would probably use half, okay? So I would top it like so. And then love cilantro. It always adds so much great flavor. I would do a little bit of cilantro on top and maybe even some salsa. And then here you go. We have this gorgeous lunch or That's dinner. Amazing. This is like, this took me, no joke, about 10 minutes to make. I prepped this before we started. It was so fast, so easy. Everything was already like prepared and chopped and ready to go. Use a little seasoning, some delicious olive oil, and look what you got. It's so that, good. That so, looks great. I wish I was having dinner with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and if your family doesn't like the salad part of it, you can use this ground turkey on a multitude of things. One of my favorites is um, by Outer Isle. They make these wonderful little cauliflower flatbreads. The company is called Outer Isle. And my daughter loves them. So you can toast. And then you could put the ground turkey taco thing and you could put some cheese and you could put some sour cream and you could make it a little bit more kid friendly. Um, if you know, if that's what they would prefer over the salad, but I'm the salad green girl. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with having both, you know, both ways. That's great. So that, yeah. So this is just a great, easy dinner. This is like on repeat, at least once a week in my household. And by the way, if you don't like Mexican seasonings, you can do the turkey. Another favorite one of mine is to use some sesame oil, toasted sesame oil, and then tamari or mm -hmm. liquid aminos to give it more of an Asian flavor. And mm -hmm. that is amazing. And then I love with that some sugar snap peas. And then you could kind of do some carrots and onions and have like a stir fry. And you could also put that over the same bed of greens. And it's amazing. Wow, that oh. sounds great. And that does definitely sound so easy. I mean, you know, it really is. You know, yeah. you could just pull everything together in one little trip to, you know, Trader Joe's and uh, it's that's simple. Oh. It really is simple. I always say to my clients and my followers, hey, guys, it doesn't have to be complicated. I actually don't really follow a lot of recipes. I just sort of look for where am I getting my greens? Where am I getting my vegetables? Where's my protein? I pull out some good olive oil and spices and herbs. And there you go. You have a beautiful meal. It doesn't have to be complicated. Eating healthy does not have to be expensive and it doesn't have to be confusing. I promise oh, you. Thank you so much. I have to, I have to say mm. you really made that so easy. And I actually mm. saw you prepping it on your social media before. <laughs> yeah. So I was excited to see what it was going to turn into. Yeah. I'm totally surprised. It's, it's a totally different meal than I expected. I expected a it, salad, you know, like chomping. Yeah. Lovely. No, it's really, it's so, so easy. It really, really is. And by the way, these were just what was available today at Trader Joe's, but they often have so many different packages of greens. Don't be scared, guys. You're not going to make a mistake. You can almost use any of the greens and experiment. And from kale to spinach, a lot of them have a bunch of different Brussels sprouts in them. And it's fun. You can't go wrong. You really can't. I think people are frightened uh, of making some sort of mistake I say just get in the kitchen just start playing a little bit and when you're using really good clean ingredients you're not going to make a mistake and if you have questions 
just DM me. I'm so available and I love to help. So you can follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Well, thank you so okay. much, Audrey. I know I can see everyone's already chiming in that they already, you made their cooking menu for tomorrow night. Oh, so good. That's wonderful. <laughs> I'm happy. Wonderful. Great, great, great. great. So Audrey, um, yeah. hang tight. We're going to switch over and talk okay. to Liz a little bit now. So, you know, obviously Audrey got us ready with a great meal. Liz, who many of you, you know, probably met on YWTV a few weeks ago. We had a wonderful workout session which I uh, still do some of the exercises in the middle of my day. You taught me how to nicely do it, you know, while I'm on a Zoom standing at a counter. Um, so I loved all the tips you gave us then. Um, Liz is a fitness and food coach, and she firmly believes that healthy does not have to be hard. Uh, and we're definitely learning that. Audrey already set the tone for that. Um, she prioritizes helping her clients identify their personal health goals, abilities, and challenges, and empowers them to implement specific, sustainable changes and to big health benefits. She has 15 years of experience coaching clients in a group setting, um, and she also achieves results by implementing personalized strategies that are effective and enjoyable. So Liz, tell us a little bit about how we can do some self-massage. Um, we can't... Uh, that's good. Yep. You hear me? Good now. Okay, great. Sorry about yes. that. So, you know, the it's last okay. time we talked about more, you know, exercise and this morning I taught a high intensity exercise class, but I think it's really important to understand that like recovery um, is a really important part of your um, health and wellness sort of protocol. And, um, you know, one way that you can do that is with self massage. Um, I have these little uh, yoga tune up balls here. This is a popular brand, but honestly you can use, um, if you've got kids rubber balls or if you've got tennis balls even, those are great. And, um, you know, just a, a couple different key spots in the body that tend to get really tight and tense, even just like while you're sitting at your desk or, you know, before bed, just working those areas out, you'll really notice not only a, a positive impact on your stress levels and, and your sleep, but also your exercise recovery. So really important if you're someone who works out hard or maybe you're someone who sits at a desk or maybe you're both, <laughs> right? This is really um, an, an easy thing to integrate. Yeah, um, I have to say, I've actually taken a class on this oh, and cool. I integrated it into my life that I use um, uh, use the balls to do, to do like massage on my back and my neck area um, yeah. and tricks. So, I tell everyone, pay attention. This is life changing and it's just a few minutes and it really like makes your entire stress of your day go away. Totally. It doesn't have to be a big, huge thing. And it's yeah. one of those things that when you do it, you're like, why don't I do that more? <laughs> right? yeah. because it just feels so good because, you know, not to get too sciencey, but it actually affects your parasympathetic nervous system. So, you know, your fight or flight response, yeah. that's your sympathetic nervous system. That's when you get all like stressed up and your general adrenaline's running, but your parasympathetic nervous system is what helps you calm down and relax. So, you know, those those tight muscles you're feeling for maybe hunching over your computer. Yeah, that's a structural thing. But like if you're feeling stressed out all the time and you're not kind of mitigating that, it's not going to get any better. Right. Um, so, again, you can use you can buy these balls online. But again, kids sort of rubber balls, um, tennis balls, they all work. Um, the only sort of rules I have, you know, you can't really go wrong here. You just want to make sure you're on tissue and not like on like bony protrusions, right? So you don't want to do like your elbow or like, you know, the sensitive spot of your lower back. But other than that, anything kind of goes, right? <laughs> anything that feels good. Um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes with things like this and with foam rolling, people think it needs to hurt in order for it to work. But that's actually the opposite, right? Because I always use the example if you've ever... Um, gone for like a, a pedicure or gone for a first massage and the, the therapist like digs in too deep and you kind of seize up, right? You get more stressed out. So we're trying to basically coax our nervous system and our muscles to calm down a little bit. Um, the other really important rule is just to breathe. And I'll, I'll go through a few breathing techniques, but really just breathing is important. There's no right or wrong. And the exhale is going to be what's really helpful to kind of get you to de stress. Okay. So I'm going to take you through a few things over on my mat, just so you guys can see. I do have two balls. Um, if you have two, great. This has, they have a little um, pouch that they come in. If you don't have one of these, you can use two tennis balls and like a tube sock. So you don't even have to buy anything if you have those things at home. Um, I do also have a yoga block that I'm going to bring with me just to kind of make things a little bit easier. But if you don't have a yoga block, like a book, anything like that is helpful. Um, I'm going to focus on the hips, the shoulders, 
and the neck, kind of the upper back. Those are, I think, most people's problem areas, right? Um, just a quick word, if you're using these two balls together, it's going to be less pressure, less tension. So if it feels like it's too much, you can try two balls to give you more surface area. To be a little bit more intense or sort of like specific, you can just use one ball. So super easy thing. This is actually great to do like at your desk chair is to stick the ball under your butt. <laughs> okay, so anywhere under that area where you feel like you're, you're on tissue and not like directly on bone. Um, you can cross your leg over, just like you might when you're doing a stretch, and just kind of shift side to side. So again, truly, there's like not a whole lot of right or wrong. If you feel anything sharp or shooting, you're going to want to avoid that. Um, and again, you want to breathe. So if you find an area that's a little bit more tense, I encourage you to take like a deep breath in, and then really think exhale. And when you exhale, you kind of relax a little bit, right? You're going to get a little deeper into the tissue. You can move your leg around, you know, make some circles, you can even sort of roll back and forth. Um, you know, if you're ever kind of like sitting on the ground with your kids, maybe while they're playing, like this is a thing that you can multitask with. Um, and of course you want to do both sides. Helen was talking about when she's on Zoom calls, like I highly encourage you to do this while you're sitting in your chair, right? Nobody's even going to know unless you accidentally push a little too hard. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. So basically, again, you're going to try to go over those like large areas of tissue. Definitely this is going to help the glutes, but also the lower back. A lot of the time the tension you have in your lower back is actually from like around your hips. So I would start with the, the bigger muscles of the lower back. And then when you move up, I'm going to put the balls in the toe just so I have a little bit more surface area. Um, you can sort of almost give yourself like a little massage up and down your spine. You can use the balls on either side of your spine, right? So it's almost like a little little gully there. Um, and if laying on the floor or sitting on the ground is too much tension, you can actually do this against the wall, right? Like think like Yogi Berra kind of running up and down the wall. Um, all you can do is like lift your hips up and sort of like massage up and down, just kind of little tiny movements. Think like an inch back and forth. You can lift and lower your hips, even moving your arms around here. Couple different techniques. So right now I'm just laying on the balls. So I'm pinning my muscles down and then I'm stretching kind of another joint. That's another way to do it. Um, you can certainly lean a little bit more to one side or the other. The one really, really nice one here is the neck. So I'm going to show you with my lock, right? Kind of set myself up where you kind of put the ball at the base of the skull, right where the base of the skull is there. Uh, you kind of cradle your neck there. And this one's like really nice before bed because you don't have to do much. You can kind of just lie down. If you ever practice yoga, I think like Shavasana with your feet on the floor though, and just kind of take a deep breath in and even just by nodding your head, like yes and no. There's so many different like nerve endings. There's so many tissues that kind of uh, connect there. And even just staying still and taking a couple deep breaths. Really focusing on your exhale. All right. And then when you're ready, just always kind of slowly transitioning. So those are sort of my, my favorite go-tos, the glutes, the upper back. You can also do up here your traps, um, using like a, a door frame to kind of lean into it. Um, one more quick one I'll show you that's easy to do on your own. If you tend to get really tight in your shoulders, just take the ball in one hand, right, whatever hand you have it in, and reach your arm out to the side. And then when you bend your elbow and you pray, place your ball like right on your chest, just kind of more toward your shoulder, you can use your other hand and kind of make little circles there. So I'm using my outside hand for leverage and then using my inside hand to kind of help guide it. That's really, really great if you're spending a lot of time at the computer and you're feeling like your shoulders are tight. That's so wonderful. Yeah. I've never done it. I've never done it here. I've always done it in the back. That's great. I'm gonna yeah. And next too. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, as I said, I, I can totally attest to everybody that this works. It's something that I took a class on a few months ago, and it's part of my, you know, routine. And it absolutely has been that way for me, Liz, when I do it, that I think to myself, why don't I do this every single day, like twice a day? Because it totally resets you into a positive, like, mental place and physical place. It really does. The last time we spoke, we talked about, like, taking – you know, taking five minutes, getting up from your desk and doing like 50 squats. Well, I'm, I'm just as happy as you do. You take five minutes and do this. Um, this is even really great before a workout because, you know, if your muscles are chronically tight and then you try to exercise, it's not going to be as easy to move as, you know, as efficiently as you want mm -hmm. to. So, so truly it's something that's helpful to do any time of the day. 
All right. Okay, everyone. So so tomorrow night you're gonna make your taco dinner. You got, got this morning <laughs> again. I know you guys are all watching. And then you make sure that you go find some tennis balls in the house and uh, do a little bit of uh, rolling yep. and dress. Well, thanks, Liz. That's wonderful. And I'm sure everyone watching is just getting so many good tips about feeling good. Well, we're not done yet. We've got more for you. We're going to flip over and chat with Jessica a little bit. Thanks, Liz, so much. You're welcome. Take care. Good to see you again. Hi, Jessica. So everyone, this is Jessica. She's a certified holistic nutritionist, mindfulness, life coach, and corporate wellness educator and consultant. And she is here to, we're moving, we're moving through our whole being. We figured out something good to put inside. We figured out how to help our muscles on the outside. She's going to help us up here, which will help us everywhere. <laughs> um, she's going to lead us in a mindfulness breathing exercise and a guided meditation. Um, she owns Low Yo Wellness um, and is the founder of the Low Yo Method, an intuitive eating, weight loss, and transformation program where moms can heal themselves from chronic yo-yo dieting, stress eating, emotional attachment to food, um, all without giving up chocolate and wine, which, you know, seems to me is like a win-win all the way around. Um, she helps women create happier, wholesome, balanced lives um, and freedom. And again, she specializes in intuitive weight loss and emotional eating help so that women can love their bodies again. Um, and that's a real big one for a lot of us, especially after we've had kids, right? We end up looking different and years pass of finishing what's on the plate, you know, when they don't eat it so it doesn't go to waste. I did that last night after I ate my own meal and I'm like, why am I doing this? Just because I felt bad throwing it out. Um, and it's really, it's, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a, a, a mind trip that we do to ourselves that impacts us, you know, feeling good. So Jessica... Tell us a little bit, you know, um, what are you seeing with the stress level of your clients right now? I think every, I think that mental health right now is, is really on the rise as far as people are not dealing with the challenges um, very well because they don't have the tools to support them. And they're in these circumstances that we've never been in right now. So stress levels are really high. And unfortunately, our bodies are physiologically not meant to handle these, you know, when we're stressed, use the terminology of the tiger scenario, you know, caveman days, and you're confronted with a tiger, and it's eat or be eaten, and fight or flight, and then it's over, right? It's not meant to last this long. I mean, we're in two and a half months or so of corona yeah. right now, and people are, are not used to being home for so long or taking care of their little children or being home with their bigger children and having to homeschool or dealing with all of these increased stressors, financial pressures, people getting sick, um, people concerned about other people getting sick. There's a lot of stress. And what I'm seeing is that, you know, the people that have the right tools and mechanisms to respond to this incredible stressor that we're all dealing with are able to be resilient. They're able to bounce back. They're able to get through and adapt to the change. And I think having those mechanisms, whether it be, you know, mindfulness, which we'll go through, which whether it be healthy eating and incorporating super simple healthy foods, like Audrey was talking about, or ways to move your body and stay calm and, you know, decrease your, you know, your neurological response to these stressors, um, all of these different factors that we're talking about tonight, that everyone's talking about tonight, can really be very beneficial to stress. Well, I, uh, you know, obviously understand <laughs> Karen, you know, feeling the stress myself and very much looking forward to hearing some strategies to help manage it. What do you suggest, Jessica? Oh, gosh. So there's, I mean, there's so many things that we can do. What I like to break it down to is, um, first, reducing the stress by limiting that fight or flight response in the first place. So there's certain triggers that, you know, activate those hormones and you limit those by doing some of the things by eating certain foods or not eating certain foods that may stimulate the stress response or eating certain foods that may decrease. Exercise is huge, right? Um, getting the appropriate sleep. When we do not get appropriate sleep, your stress response goes haywire. You really have a hard time dealing with stress. Those are just some examples. 
of limiting the actual fight or flight. Then my other sort of the other half of it is reducing stress by activating what we call rest and digest. And that's what we think of with how to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. That's how do you calm yourself? How do you say to your brain, we're okay, we're safe, we're calm. You know, it's more of the R and R to our bodies. This is things like massage, meditation, yoga, things that actually will calm yourself during those heightened scenarios. So first, it's a little bit more preventative than it's, you know, getting to the, get, you know, getting the stressor down, if that makes sense. So you're going to, we'll, I think you're going to walk us through a, an exercise, right, to yes. help, uh, help us learn some new strategies. Absolutely. I'm going to, um, I'm going to do about a, a, a couple of minutes of a mindfulness breathing guided meditation of sorts so that everyone can feel just a little bit calmer and clearer. So what I want everyone to do right now is get in a comfortable position and whether that be in a in a chair with your back supported and your head free, or perhaps it is uh, lying down on the ground. And place your hand somewhere that grounds you. And sometimes that could be your heart, your belly, or your lap. And begin to start breathing in deeply through the nose and close your eyes gently. And if closing your eyes is uncomfortable, you may want to just gaze in front of you or gaze down at your lap. Let that breath flow into your abdomen, up into your chest, expand that rib cage, and slowly let's do an exhale. Breathe in for two, and exhale for four, very slowly through your mouth. Repeat that one more time. And as you continue this breath, you can begin to feel yourself melting into your chair, surrendering into your seat, into the ground. Feel your hands grounded on your belly or your lap, or your heart. Continue to take these breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. Let your jaw soften. Your brow, the furrow in your brow soften. Maybe a gentle smile comes on your face. Your jaw drops. And as you inhale, start to breathe in relaxation. Breathe in peace, harmony. And when you exhale, you rid your mind and body of all of the stress and toxins that have been bothering you. Continue in this pattern and let your mind become mesmerized by the rhythmic pattern of the inhale and the exhale. And it's okay if your mind wanders. This is stress coming up and out. And we want those thoughts to come up and out and release themselves. And when you notice your thoughts wandering off, we don't judge. We're mindfully aware and present in this moment. Just take in your surroundings, take in your inhale and your exhale, and focus on those breaths. Imagine that breath coming in from the base of the spine, traveling up your spine, and as you exhale, sending the energy out of the middle of the forehead. Start to think about your senses. Get in touch with your surroundings. Perhaps you want to tune into your sense of hearing. What is the most subtle, subtle sound that you can hear right now? And what is the most prevalent? What are you feeling physically? Your clothes on the skin, your tactile sensations, maybe your breath on your upper lip, on your upper lip. What about your awareness to your sense of sight beyond the, black, the blackness of your eyelids? Continue to breathe. 
not ruminating on the past or worrying about the future, but just present in this moment as we move through these these senses. Now we're going to move into taste. What is the most prevalent taste that you are aware of right now? Maybe it is your dinner. Maybe it's tacos. Maybe it's something acidic or dry. What about smell? Or maybe it's the absence of smell. The more present you start to feel in the here and now, the higher quality seeds you plant for the future. And these, these changes take practice. And the better you get and the stronger your mindfulness muscles become, the more comfortable you are with this. And so begin to... Again, take in that deep breath of openness and possibility. And exhale out the toxicity. Inhale a fresh new moment. Connect with that brand new moment and let go of the worry and the anxiety or the guilt or the stress. Finally, take one more inhale a new perspective, a simple, subtle shift in your mindset. And just remember that each day you receive a blank page. It's clean, it's clear, there's nothing written on it yet. And you can be delighted at the prospect of a new day with a fresh start. Now slowly return yourself to your surroundings. You can shake your fingers and your toes and awaken your senses and slowly open your eyes. Wow, that was wonderful. Thank you. You're very welcome. What a gift. What a gift. And you can do this. I was going to ask you, how often do you do something like this? You know, I really do. The key is really doing it in short spurts. You do not need to do this for, you know, you don't need to sit for 30 minutes or, you know, an hour. You can, you can sit for five minutes and it doesn't need to be guided. It can be. And there's plenty of tools and techniques that have lots of free downloads or you can go on an app. It, you can easily just sit and focus on your breathing for just a few moments once a day and just take that five minutes to yourself to just breathe and focus on your breathing or focus on those different senses if you need a cue, right? You can focus, okay, what do I hear now? What do I smell? What do I taste? And just by breathing deeply in through your nose and out through your mouth slowly and just sitting and calming your mind will be so, so, so beneficial. And there's a lot of techniques and a lot of mindfulness and meditation techniques out there. There's tons um, but that's a simple way to just start as a beginner is by taking five minutes just to breathe. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. That you're was so welcome. helpful and, and beneficial. And as you're sitting here trying to keep us calm, my kids were running around making all kinds of noise. So I apologize if anyone <laughs> heard that while you were trying to relax. Um, but uh, it's it's definitely a good skill and technique to know. So when you do have some alone time that you can uh, employ it. And, um, I, you know, I, I can attest, I actually am a, a proponent and, you know, uh, do mindfulness exercises daily. And, uh, it really does help, especially at a time like this, when we are feeling a lot of high anxiety because of everything going on around us, but it's definitely at all times a gift to yourself. Thank you so much, Jessica. You're very welcome. So now, we are going to, from here, um, last but definitely not least, is our final guest, Judith P. Dazzle. Judith is the owner of Rock Collage, and I know it's hard to get anywhere right now, but when you can get back out, you must go. Um, it's a wellness oasis that caters to women and um, who are trying to figure out their anxieties. And she believes that healing is not a one-size-fit-all um, uh, process that everything should be very, um, there's a variety of solutions and everything should be, you know, uniquely created for everyone's individual journey. Um, and so with that, Judith takes pride and comfort of her handcrafted products, her individual services, her wellness events, support groups for women, children, men, 
um, who are on their, their uh, wellness journeys. And she offers meditation circles, yoni streams, Reiki and cupping and so many more. I definitely, um, like with all of our presenters today, we'll have links to all of their sites so you can see the work that they're doing. You can follow them all on social media and stay connected to them. So with that, Judith, I know your approach to anxiety is a little bit different from what we've uh, been you know, looking at. Can you tell us a little bit about crystals and the power of crystals and um, their impact on our well-being? Sure. So crystals um, have a metaphysical energy that um, connects to your body, whether it be through minerals or um, energy. And um, they make you feel good when you hold them or when they're around you. If you go to the beach, you have that, um, the negative ions from the sand or the water that calms you down and makes you feel more centered and at peace. Same thing with crystals and rocks and stones. They do something similar. And each stone in our crystal or rock does something that helps with your emotions, whether it be to attract things or deflect things. So that's what I love about crystals. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I, know, I, I personally have rose quartz next to my bed at all times. So I, I can attest that I believe that they do have powers and properties that we should be surrounded with. Um, so tell us a little bit, too. I'm excited to watch your demonstration. I know you're going to do something um, for us, a, a little sound bath, which is something I, yes. um, I'm also a proponent of. It's something that I, I, I go to regular classes to locally to where I live. Um, so I totally encourage everyone to, um, you know, learn more about this. You'll get a little intro today and then, you know, stay connected with Judith for more. Sure. I... Um... I'm not at my shop, but typically I use uh, crystal um, singing bowls and they range from 10 inches all the way up to like 30. Um, I love the feeling and the sound from a, singing, a crystal singing bowl, but I also have the metal bowls, which I will be playing right now. Um, and this is like a, a segue from Jessica's meditation. So, um, they all have different pitches, and if you feel any anxiety or emotions coming up, hold on to it and then let it go. Understand the emotion. Um, if you will, you can definitely journal after this or tomorrow or whenever you feel like the emotion strikes or whatever and see what you're feeling. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Let's get right into it. All right. So I'm gonna invite everyone to close their eyes and um, just sit back and relax.
That was beautiful. I have to say, I'm always so amazed at the sound that comes out of the bowls, whether they're the crystal ones or the um, the metal. I mean, it's just amazing the the depth and the uh, you know it always amazes me. And I do think it's very emotionally moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know I, it, the bowls get me every time. Whenever I play them, no matter how I play them, it, it's an emotional response. Yes, and it's and I I encourage everyone to. Um, you know, connect with Judith or, you know, uh, you know, because and, and watch because the crystal bowls is such a different experience than the um, metal bowls. And they're both mind blowing, but they're very yeah. different and they evoke very different um, emotions and feelings. So, uh, you know, if you try to try to give yourself both experiences is what I'm saying, because I really do believe they're both very. Yeah. Valuable. So that's amazing, Judith. Um, so for people that are, you know, um, uh, home right now and stressed. Uh, are, 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 tell us a little bit about your site and are there ways that they can access your service now remotely and to yeah, you know, virtually they take some of these classes that way? Definitely. Um, if you go to my website, rockcollage.com, I have events. Um, I just started posting June events. I don't have any sound baths yet, but I am looking for a date to do a sound bath. Um, I am still uh, shipping things out and or doing curbside pickup at the shop. So I'm, I'm pretty available. You can DM me or message, message me. I'm pretty available. That's great. Well, Judith, thank you. And I, I, you know, this is a wonderful hour from learning some wonderful, new, easy, healthy meal with Audrey. And, you know, for me, this is like an affirmation of, many things that I already do. So, and I'm so happy to share it with our viewers. And I, I hope people really embrace all these opportunities, you know, Liz showing us how to do the, um, the rolling to be able to, um, you know, help relieve your stress and Jessica sharing with us um, our mindfulness exercise and then the sound bath with Judith. So everyone look at all four of these wonderful women um, are available for you to connect with. They all have wonderful websites with lots of information. They have social media um, opportunities for you to connect with. Um, we on this on this um, the comments here. We have linked each of their pages. We encourage you to go to Jessica's page, Judith's page, Audrey's page, and Liz's page. Learn more about them and their activities and um, how they can help support you in your self-love and wellness effort for your for now during this time but for always it's uh it's an important um you know we can't do for others unless uh you as they say you can't drink from an empty cup and um you know i'm uh definitely someone who needs that reminder and i hope this was a good reminder for all of you i thank them all for sharing their gifts and their talents with us today and um, if for some reason uh, someone in your life you're thinking really should have seen this, um, had this opportunity to, you know, connect with these four, this broadcast of YWTV will be on our Facebook page and you can watch it anytime. Or if you yourself want to go back and take a few minutes to listen to Judith's sound bath or Jessica's exercise or be reminded of um, Audrey's recipe. Uh, or um, a few of the tips from Liz on rolling, you can watch it yourself as well. Um, from there, now I want to tell you that I hope you can join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'll be speaking with Karen Foote from Rebalance Reiki and Massage. We're going to continue this theme of taking care of yourself. Um, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about Reiki and massage and how we can find our center and bring ourselves back to balance. I can't think of a better way to be ending the week Thursday night um, with this and launching into Friday with Karen tomorrow. It's a wonderful opportunity. I hope that you can join us so that you can stay um, centered and relaxed as we go into the weekend. Um, for all of our small business owners, um, we are thinking of you. We know that this has been a challenging time for all of you. We applaud your creativity. We applaud your resilience. And um, we hope that uh, we've been able to provide a little respite for you for this hour to help you recharge and go back at it. And we thank, um, I see Jen Bladell has been on here and uh, Dr. O'Brien Richardson and, and others joining us today. Um, thank you for, uh, you know, 
chiming in and sharing some comments with us and, and our own wonderful YW Lori. And um, we hope to see you tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m., for our next Facebook Live. And um, thanks, everyone. Be well. Take care. Good night.